Friends, hello. I hope that you've kept well and safe and healthy. I just want to share an opportunity, rather a privilege that I was given, um, to be in a webinar along with other United Church um, leaders and clergy of Asian descent to share with you and with the whole church about the effects of anti-Asian racism within the United Church and within our society at large and how we have seen that really escalate during COVID times. It is a difficult but necessary conversation to have. And so we offer this invitation, especially for our non-Asian United Church friends and friends who just care about us in general. It'll be happening on May 18th at 5 p.m. And if you would like more details, please contact the office. And I really hope to see you there. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Central United Church on this beautiful spring morning. I've been taking an opportunity over these past few weeks to spend time in our parks. Calgary is blessed with a multitude of various different kinds of parks. And today I find myself by the Elbow River. And in this park, which is often used for many Sunday school picnics on a Sunday morning when we could do that kind of thing, it's a very popular park. It was brought together in the 1950s when Calgary only had 180,000 people. And now we are surrounded in a city that is a million people strong. And yet this jewel remains. It's also a popular park for dog owners to bring their dogs to the beach. And if you hear the sound of a dog in the background, you might guess where I am. As you also know, in these past weeks, I've been running a wee bit of a contest. So in our Zoom chat after our worship service on a Sunday morning, we invite you to enter into the Zoom chat and guess which park I'm at in the previous week. So here I am by the Elbow River and oh, prizes will be awarded. So get out your map of Calgary, have a look around and find out which beautiful park I'm at and in today. Welcome to our worship service. May you be uplifted by the music, by scripture, by all that you experience in the hour before us. God bless you.
We come to worship this morning bringing many things, burdens and joys, weariness as well as celebrations. We come to worship seeking many things, comfort and strength and encounter with God. We come to worship knowing many things, knowing that we are invited to live by faith, knowing that in this life there will always be more questions than answers. Gather us in, O oh Lord, our longings and our hopes, and let them be experienced in worship this morning. May we gather with a sense of joy and thanksgiving. Good morning. Use your voice for kindness, your ears for compassion, your hands for helping the marginalized, your mind for truth, and your heart for love. Then joy will come to you and you will be transformed. Not that you will ever know grief, but that you have surrounded yourself with people who will accompany you on the journey and bring you back to places of joy again. This is what the ministry of Jesus was all about. And so we light our Christ candle this morning and remind us to be kind, compassionate, helpful, truthful, and loving. And may the light of Christ shine in your heart this day. You come amongst us in surprising ways, splashing us with joy. Come this morning, we pray, to fill our minds with wonder and to open our eyes to renewed sight, to fill our lives with the warm embrace, open our hearts and receive your unconditional love and to know joy just being in your presence. Amen. Hello, my young friends. This is me, Miss Mary. On Friday, I mailed out some more Faith at Home kits. These kits are for Pentecost and the green growing season. The kits were prepared by the First Third Ministry from the Pacific Mountain Regional Council of the United Church of Canada and by Central United Church too. Let's see what's included in these kits. First, we have the Embracing Spirit magazine, and it is filled with some very interesting and fun activities. Then we have two felt underlays. The red is for Pentecost, and the green is for the green growing season. Next, there are four good news postcards for you to send a note of gratitude and enthusiasm to people you care about. Then there are some watercolor papers. These watercolor papers are for you to do a breath painting. This is origami paper, Japanese paper folding art. Next, there are some pieces of wax paper and elastics so you can make a kazoo. This ribbon and this stick are for you to create a Pentecost ribbon wand. And these straws and feathers are for your family to have some straw races. Wow, that is a lot of fun stuff. Pentecost is a time for celebration. We celebrate God. We celebrate Jesus. And we celebrate the Holy Spirit. May the new life of the green growing season fill your hearts. May you be inspired to celebrate Pentecost in your homes and seek God's loving presence. Enjoy your faith at home, kids. Thanks for listening.
heaven is in my heart. Today, during our prayer time, I'd like to share with you prayers that uh, have come to us, to me, uh, in terms of some folks in the wider United Church who've written down some beautiful prayers. And I thought that today you might like to catch a flavor of that in this prayer time. These prayers are written from the heart of the particular individuals. And we often don't give credit to people who write liturgy or write prayers. And I'd like to do that this morning. So settle now into this prayer time. Rest your heart. Have the sense of God's spirit all around you as we come to God in prayer. I'd like to offer a prayer from Jim McKean from Aurelia, Ontario. And he prays this. Ground of our being. Each day we wake and ask ourselves what you have in store for us for this day. Some days we find the answer in the goodness that others do for us and for others. Some days we find the answer in the places we very least expect it. May this season of Easter be a time of renewal and restoration for all of us. In the name of the risen Christ. Amen. I offer you a prayer from Carol Frost from Mendoza United Church in Mendoza, Manitoba. Gracious God, we feel your spirit within us and within our church. Keep us energized by your presence so that we are not content with the status quo. Help us to keep your spirit alive within us and within our church so that we may truly live as the people of God. While the day-to-day functioning of our church is important, it is not our total reason for being a community of faith. Help us to remember that we are more because we are together. Help us not to be so distracted that we forget what is at the heart of our church. In Jesus' words, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Through our church, may we live the life of Jesus in our world. Guide and support us as a missional church, spreading the good news of the gospel, living with the strength of your Holy Spirit 
and as disciples of Jesus, we praise you. Amen. And one final one. Creator, we bring our doubts and our questions, and as you touch our unbelief, we turn them, hopefully, into adventures. Come now, O Spirit, and create a moment of glory and joy where we can sense you among us, and the world can witness in us the good news that the resurrection brings. Amen. Our prayer written by Peter Chenouth from Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories. I offer these different prayers to you so that you have a sense of the wideness of the United Church and the vast array of people who call the United Church their home and whom we are praying with this morning as we say together that beautiful prayer that Jesus left us when he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every morning, as we gather together in this way to worship God, we always pause in the midst of our worship time to reflect and to meditate on the ministry that we offer to the world, the ministry of Jesus. We pause and reflect so that we might find ourselves in the midst of that ministry and how much we want to support it. And during this time, I've also spent time shining a spotlight on aspects of the ministry that your offering supports as we offer the light of Christ to the world. So this morning, I'd like to focus that spotlight on Elena. She is our organist, our brilliant organist and pianist and accompanist. Every day, every time we get together for worship, we have a prelude and a postlude, and these are usually provided by Elena. And usually she plays the organ, that beautiful, magnificent organ of ours. And she makes the rafters ring with that. She is indeed a gifted musician, and we are blessed to have her as part of our staffing team here at Central. So I remind you that some of the money that you offer to us during this offering time goes to pay for her salary, and in that way we are uplifted in our faith by the beautiful music that she offers to us week by week. Our morning offering will now be received.
thank you for your generosity to Central and our ministry. Let us bless that offering now. With these gifts, O God, we set loose your great work in the world. For today, we see that love is stronger than anger, hope is stronger than fear, and joy can be ever present in our lives. Bless what we humbly bring to you this day, O God. Amen. Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is taken from John 17, verses 6 to 13, from the New Revised Standard Version translation. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave to me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our scripture focus for worship today is from the Gospel of John. It is one of the four Gospels that forms the canon of part of the New Testament or the Christian scriptures for us. It is the Gospel that was written the last, around 100 to 110 CE. And so by this time, two things are happening. Number one, that group of people, the followers of Jesus, are starting more and more to move away from the synagogue. They are now becoming more fully Christians rather than Jewish Christians. And the second thing that's happening uh, in uh, the Gospel of John is that we are seeing the tracks being laid down of the orthodoxy of the Christian church, the things that Christians would come to live by in the following centuries. So the Gospel of John is different than the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are called synoptic Gospels, and which use each other's to write their Gospel. The Gospel of John stands alone. It has that theological flavor to it that is quite strong and certainly sets the pattern for our belief system as Christians. Early church fathers thought that this gospel of John was actually written by John, the son of Zebedee, who was a disciple of Jesus. But the dating of it at around 100 uh, CE would tell us by this time that the original body of disciples, all of them were gone. And the original followers would have been gone. So they are, John is looking back in time and he is giving us information about what happened. It's a post-resurrection reading today. And it's a very intimate reading in the sense that Jesus seems to be speaking to Abba Father and saying, you know, Dad, I did my best. I tried to teach them all that you taught me that you poured into me and now I poured out into them. And now I'm coming to you 
And my hope and prayer is that I have left joy within them, joy in abundance, so that they will know that their lives can, in the midst of even the most difficult moments, can be lived with joy. That is my legacy and my gift. I hope that I'm leaving with them. Joy in abundance. So thinking about this matter of joy, I thought that I would ask some people in our congregation, in our community of faith, and ask them the question, what brings you joy? Let's hear what they have to say. Good morning. Pastor Linda has asked me to speak on the subject of joy. Now, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is based on my circumstances. Joy is based in my relationship with my higher power. I feel joy in reading the following scriptures that are part of my morning routine. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. You can throw the whole weight of your anxieties upon him, for you are his personal concern. Now, I have a coffee cup with this on it that also says, it's kind of funny, this is God speaking. I will be handling all your problems today. I will not need your help. <laughs> Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Obviously, that's the King James Version. I love that, whithersoever. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. That was one of Pastor Wayne's favorites. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 one of the great passages of the Bible. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. John 14, verse 27, this is Jesus speaking. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. John 16 and verse 33, Jesus speaking again. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Romans 8, verse 18, this is St. Paul. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed to us. Romans 8, and verse 28, St. Paul again. And this is our family secret in Christianity. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. In Galatians 5, 22, St. Paul again, the Holy Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. And finally, this one's my favorite. Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I find joy in the fact that God has called me heavenward. Little old me, undeserving me. He has called me. That fills me with joy. Thank you. What brings me joy? Um, Pinner brings me joy, but all animals bring me joy. Yes, I love animals. Uh, corporate worship brings me joy. Uh, the smell of fresh baked bread. Uh, music, all different kinds of music. I derive great joy. Family and friends. I love hanging out with my dad. I love going for walks with my best friend. Family and friends are a great source of joy. Um, that's probably good. Did I say sunshine? 
anyone who knows me knows I love the sunshine. To read in the sunshine, to sleep in the sunshine, just to sit out and absorb the warmth. I love the sun. Those are a few things that bring me great joy. Hey, I just wanted to share something that gives me a lot of joy and that is food, a really nice meal with amazing company having a good time. I think a lot of people just underestimate the power of a really delicious meal. It's always something that I always look forward to and it puts a really big smile on my face. Um, for me, it it's healing. Um, it, it feels so restorative um, and I just can't talk highly enough about the power of a good meal especially when you really want to get to know someone or you really want to be present with someone um, in hopes to give them joy a good meal is the key for me I'm so very grateful that these folks have taken a moment in time, in their time, to share with us what brings them joy in this life. And I want to read for you just the last section of the scripture reading of the morning. And Jesus is speaking. John has Jesus speaking, saying, But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. That is Jesus' wish for us, that you might know joy in this life. And in this time of pandemic, when it's so difficult to find those slivers of joy, perhaps it's time for us to develop an attitude of gratitude, even for the smallest things that are rich and full and wholesome and healthy and joyful. Perhaps in that way, in that attitude of gratitude, we will deepen the places of joy within ourselves. And then we might spread that joy to others, even as Jesus did and his disciples, because God knows the world needs joy. May you be the person who sows seeds of joy in this world. Amen.
I hope that you've enjoyed seeing some of the faces of the community here at Central United Church, sharing their faith with you and sharing those things in their life that bring them joy. We send you out now with this blessing, knowing that God is with you all the time, everywhere, loving you. So I invite you to know this, that as you go from this place, that you live God's love in the world so that you might bring joy to the world and to yourself. May you be bathed in joy, even in those difficult places in your life. Amen.